Hey guys, Jim here. This time, I'm back painting more of the Death Tide Jurikin from Artisan Guild. However, I'll be painting them up using the slap chop method and using Citadel contrast paints. I had intended on painting all three up in various ways with metallic paints for glittery fish scales, but I wasn't happy with the results, which you will see during and at the end of the video. Anyway, this entire video, I do focus on the one model. As mentioned in my previous video, this set has been primed in Macrag Blue, but for the purposes of this video, I'm starting with a base layer of Rakarth Flesh. It's a great paint for getting a light colour down, as it's a light grey, and it has excellent coverage. If you don't have this paint already, I suggest you get it. So first up, a lot of slap chop models start with a black base coat and work up to white with dry brushing. I found that this leaves the recesses too dark and almost blotchy. Instead, I build up the dark recesses with contrast paints. In this case, I'm using Black Templar mixed with some contrast medium. I used a little bit too much medium with the first coating. This actually then helped the second coating pull into all those recesses as they were already wet. If you get the right balance, you won't need to do this twice like I did. I applied this all over the model. Next, we're looking to bring back all of the sharp features with a dry brush of Proacryl Ivory. You'll see me here wiping the paint onto my dry brush with another brush. I've done this because it's too easy to overload the dry brush with paint if you use it straight from the palette. It's safer and more controlled to wipe it on this way. Dry brushing is probably one of the first techniques any painter learns. If you don't know how to do it, you load paint on to a large brush, like the makeup brush I'm using, and then remove a lot of that paint off onto another surface. In this case, I'm using some kitchen paper. This is to take away a lot of the moisture from that paint, leaving pigment behind. I then brush it all over the model in a downward motion. Now, I apply Eldarmory Emerald all over the skin. You can use this paint straight from the pot, but out of habit, I like to put it on my palette. I'm applying this with a size 4 brush. The smaller the brush, the longer this step will take, but it will be a more controlled application of the paint. I would advise using a larger brush, as with contrast paint, if you apply it too thin, the coverage will be faint and it might need a second coat, which then makes the process of speed painting a little bit pointless. I go back in with Rakarth Flesh and just cover up those areas where I spilled over with the contrast paint.
Next up, I'm using Black Templar again, but this time to paint in the net that he's holding in his right hand. I take a little more care applying this so that I don't go over the patches of seaweed all over the net. Moving on to the armour, I apply Shaiish purple. This is to the chest piece, girdle and braces. Again, being careful not to spill onto any of the painted skin sections. If you do spill over, you can use a wet brush to mop up the contrast paint, but depending how humid the room is, it could be dry already and there might leave a little bit of coffee staining. Now, I apply Agaros Dunes all over the base, but excluding the rock that this model is positioned on. Then I apply Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint all over the Bone Hook weapon. And now, taking Sigvold Burgundy, I paint the entirety of the mouth. This is a great paint for pink fleshy areas and I highly recommend getting it even if you don't use contrast paints it has excellent coverage. Next I apply Dark Angel's Green to the Kelp Loincloth. Again, I'm being careful not to get it onto any of the skin of the model. Sticking with Dark Angel's Green, I apply it to the Kelp on the fishing net too. Continuing with blocking in the smaller parts of the model, I paint the straps on the net with snake bite leather. Next, I use Night Horn Gloom to paint the rock. At the time I bought this paint, it was a technical paint, but since it's been made into a contrast paint. I use this one quite a lot for the dark stone colour, especially on stone slabs for model bases. I said you would see the other two. This is just a little progress update. All three were painted using contrast paints, but the outer two had a metal first coat rather than the Rakarth flesh base. Next, another ivory dry brush, just focusing on the hook weapon. It helps to bring out that bone effect. Now, I take some Scrag Brown onto a size S Citadel dry brush, and I carefully brush the net.
It's time to go back over all those shells and limpets that were on the base and armour that I covered up at the earlier stages. I simply repainted them all with Rekar flesh. I'm starting to pick out a lot of those smaller details now, and I paint all of the teeth with Proacryl Ivory. Sticking with Pro Acryl Ivory, I paint in the eyes. I'm using quite a watered down mixture so it runs into the recesses. I'll then come back with a second coat afterwards. Now using Agrax Earthshade, I apply all of the inside of the mouth, but I exclude the tongue. Next, I take some Doomfire Magenta and cover all of the eyes. Now that Doomfire Magenta is dried, I take some Wild Rider Red and I just cover up the center of the eyes. Lastly for the eyes, I take a little bit of ivory and place a dot right in the centre. With the ivory I've still got on the brush, I go back and I carefully pick out all the edges of those teeth. I go back to Agrax Earthshade and I use it to cover up all of the limb pits on the base and the armour again.
then taking some Abaddon Black, I paint this all over the base rim. This next part was completely new for me. I wanted to recreate the shiny pearl armour of the Sahuagin, and credit to my missus, she suggested using some nail polish. I'd seen Guy from Midwinter Minis do a similar thing with some Eldar a few years ago, and for £3 a bottle, I thought it was well worth a go. I found the perfect one, called Mermaid Fin. I didn't use the applicator in the lid, as it was too thick, and I was worried that it would spill onto some of the skin. I knew I wouldn't be able to remove it safely. One thing to note, it will absolutely wreck your paintbrush. I had to spend about 20 minutes cleaning it after this just to get it to a usable state again, but it will never be the same. It will be the now designated nail polish brush. I applied the nail polish all over the plate armour sections, along with the seashells found on the base. Thanks again for watching. I hope that maybe I've made someone's painting out there a little easier with this video. Let me know what you liked and didn't like, and let me know if you'll be using nail polish for your minis. Take care. Cheers.